another day of summer camp at Michael's. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name's Catherine and this is my daughter Bellamy. So Bellamy is six years old. She'll be going into what grade in the fall? First. Okay. It's almost here. Um, in Texas we have less than a month left until school starts. Uh, like many of you, we're still at home and we'll be starting school virtual. So one of the uh, craft that we're doing today is a backpack charm. Uh, Bellamy loves to put charms in her backpack and we'll be using it whether we are virtual or in person. So we are excited to share this craft with you today. You also could make it into a keychain um, or anything like that. So I want to let you know a few things before we start. Here, hold on to that for me for just a minute. Just a minute. We're trying to talk to everybody first. Okay, so before we get started, <clears throat> the instructions will be in the chat. And then today we're going to use Q&A. So if you have a question about the craft or anything that you need to know while we're crafting here, put it in our question um, and answer section. And then Lindsay is on with me. Can you say hi to everyone, Lindsay? She's waving. Hello. Hi. So uh, Lindsay will be monitoring the Q&A and she is going to answer your questions. And then if you have a question that may have already been asked, you can also read the Q&A for yourself and see if there is an answer there. Um, but we want you to engage with us. I might ask you a question during everything. So feel free to chat with uh, Lindsay and she'll let us know what's going on out there today. Okay, so one other fun thing before we begin, this is the last week of summer camp. So make sure you sign up for the other classes. I know we're doing a paper bead bracelet. I think tomorrow's a rainbow wrapped with yarn. Um, I know there's a sculpting class at the end of the week. So we hope that you sign up and enjoy what is left of summer camp. And then as you take our classes and make products with us, you can always post your project on social media, hashtag make it with Michaels. All right, so I'm going to show you um, the supplies that we're gonna need, and then when we're ready, we'll flip to the overhead camera so that you can watch us make today's craft. So the core of today's craft is the keychain kit. So hopefully you saw in your instructions that this is a kit that you can buy at Michaels. Now, if you didn't get the kit, no problem. If you have a key ring around your house, gather all of your favorite craft supplies, whether it's a pom-pom, um, some chenille stems, even just paper. If you're someone who has shrinky deep paper, that's a good one. You also could use a photograph, construction paper, cardstock. You can make a lot of things into a backpack charm or a keychain. So like I said, if you don't have the kit, it, it comes with stars, circles, and hearts. Um, it comes with plastic pieces for both sides and a piece of paper to put in the middle. But if for some reason you don't have this kit, like I said, grab your favorite craft supplies and go ahead and make a keychain with this, okay? Um, so that's your main supply that we're gonna need today. And then to make the tassel, we want some yarn. So we picked our favorite Craft Smart yarn in our favorite colorway. We use this one all the time. And it's gonna make a really colorful tassel on today's keychain. We're gonna use some pony beads. Um, these are just Creatology pony beads. We pick the colors that go with our tassel. And then we um, also got, let's see what else we have here. We have some marker paper. So you'll just want some paper. If you want to do the inside, if you have the kit and you want to do the inside of your keychain in a different color, you'll grab construction paper, wrapping paper, pattern paper, whatever you'd like. If you want to do white, well, that's what we're going to do. Um, you'll draw in color on the paper with colored pencils or markers. I'll be showing you all of our supplies. Thank you, ma'am. You'll need some scissors to cut it out, pencils to trace. And then I always recommend a little bit of clear tape for these keychains. I use the really clear, clear, super see-through tape. And I just tape the edges just a tiny bit to keep my keychain closed. And we'll walk you through that as one of the last steps here in a few minutes. So friends, I wanna make sure you take a second and gather your supplies because we are about to make our charm. And we're not in a rush. And we're not in a rush, that's right. Okay, so Lindsay, any questions coming up in the chat as everyone is gathering their supplies? I think that you have answered most of the questions that people had at the beginning, so I think we might be good right now. Okay, well, let's get to the fun part, making our backpack charm. Okay, you can switch the camera when you're ready. All right, so first thing you wanna do is decide what shape you're doing. So I just wanna show you guys 
This is the charm that I made. So I decorated both sides of the piece of paper. On the front, I put a palm tree and my initials. So I'm really looking forward to going to the beach again one day. And um, I made my tassel, attached it to the ring, and then I colored the back side. I just did colored pencil and some marker dots. This side is colored pencil, pen, and marker. Okay, and then here is the tassel. So I'll show you all the steps here in just a second. I just want you to get to see our backpack charm when we get started. So, like I said, first things first, you are going to decide which shape you're gonna do. So I'm gonna stick with the circle since that's what I did um, in my first charm. My daughter Bellamy is going to do the heart shape. And then you also have the option of doing a star if you bought our kit. Now, the first step is to take your piece of paper and decide, are you gonna color on this one or do you want to um, trace it out on a different kind of paper, construction paper, wrapping paper, printed paper, a photograph, pretty much anything you can think of, glitter paper. I'll just tell you not to go too thick. Um, there's not a ton of room in here if you are using this template. So you wanna go um, with a thinner paper would be better. But decide if you want to do a different kind of paper. If so, now's the point where you're going to go ahead and trace this and then cut it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with my circle. One reason I would recommend trying to do that is if you're gonna make it two-sided, you might want a little bit thicker paper than what it comes with. The reason I used colored pencil to color the back of mine was so that I couldn't see the palm tree as well, but you can see, you can still see it just a little bit through the paper. So if you wanna prevent that, then you may want to use a different quality of paper, which is totally fine. I love that this is super easy to trace and cut out from a template perspective. So that's what you're gonna see me doing first over here. Can I piece paper, Bellamy? Okay. So I am using our marker paper by Creatology. Feel free to use, like I said, just about anything you want. Um, a little thinner is a little easier, so keep that in mind. And then um, whenever you guys get a chance, I know everyone's busy getting started on their craft, but if you are doing an alternate keychain, meaning you didn't have the kit, but you're still making something with us today, we'd love to know what you're making with, what your plan is. Um, so feel free to put it in the Q&A or the chat and just let us know. I'm interested in your projects and what you guys are doing today. Or if you already know what design you're gonna do. I, it took me a minute to land on the palm tree. I was gonna say I already know. Bellamy, what are you drawing for your design? A girl. A girl. Is it you? No. Is it a friend? Yeah. Yes, okay, cool. Friend of mine at school that I didn't get to see. All right, so I traced my circle and now I'm just cutting it out. So you would be doing the same thing if you're using a different quality of paper. If you're not, then you are probably already making a design. How are we doing, Lindsay? Any questions I can answer? Or anyone telling us about their keychain designs yet? There is someone who is asking if they could use um, like a foam sheet. And I think that could be a good option if they do not have the keychain kit. To yes, good call. Put it fit so, into the keychain. Yes, I love that idea. Foam sheets are super durable. Um, if you don't have the keychain kit, I love that backup. And the other cool thing about um, doing it that way is you can make it layered. So I love the sticky foam sheets. You could maybe cut out, you know, repeating shapes to make it kind of 3D and they should stay really well. Love that the foam sheets have great um, adhesion. Okay, so like I said, I just traced and cut out my circle. I'm gonna put the lighter piece of paper away and work with a little bit thicker marker paper. And then I am going to decide on a design. So since I did the palm tree earlier, hmm, what should I do this time? What should I do, Bellamy? To do a plant with stairs and sand. A plant with stairs and sand. The plant next to stairs and then sand everywhere. Oh, wow. Okay. Bellamy is challenging my drawing skills. Because, <laughs> because our palm tree looks really good. But that's what I'm trying to <laughs> So I might just do a plant. I really like that idea. 
Um, I have a snake plant in the house. Not sure if you guys have any plants in your house, but it's definitely become a hobby of mine as we have been home more to have a few extra plants in the house. And I'm really proud of the ones I'm able to keep alive. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take that opportunity to draw a plant. My snake plant has probably been my most successful plant. So I'm just drawing a little planter and I did it in pencil first. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I do it in pen. Um, I'm giving it my little planter some feet. I'm doing this upside down you guys, but I will come right side up here in a minute and show you how it's going. Now, if you're familiar with a snake plant, you know it has lots of tall kind of slender leaves. I have one that has like, it's a baby one, so it's really short, but it has so many sprouts, it's kind of insane, and it sits in our kitchen. This one's gonna be more like the one in my living room that's an adult snake plant. All right, so I'm just coloring in. Ooh, that green is not what I was expecting. It's more olive. That's okay. But it does look really cute. It does look really cute. Bellamy, thank you, my dear. Yeah. We have a lot of cool ideas that people are doing. Yeah, uh, someone is using a soccer ball and using the circle keychain. Using what? The circle keychain, and they're turning it into a soccer ball design. I thought you said they were using a soccer ball. I was like, that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Similarly, I love it. that idea. A cat. Lots of animals, it seems. That's good. I love that idea. I know uh, the current backpack chains on Bellamy's backpack are, I think, a lot of animals. Yeah, <laughs> bumblebee and tiger. Let me get you in rainbow. All right. And then um, let's see, what do I want to write on my flower pot? You say be happy? No, we should say, go to the beach. Go to the beach <laughs> on my flower pot. I think we're going to say, be happy. I may need to write now that Now go pencil. to the beach. All right. <laughs> so we're going to say, go to the beach. We also have a few people doing their initials. Oh, I love that. I That's what I did on my initial one. My initial one. Ha ha. Um, that's what I did on my first one. I might do something here too um, with my initials, but I think that's a fun way to personalize your craft, your craft and your bag. And everybody has a different bag. That's right. If you make the keychain, it's fine. It doesn't have to look perfect. <laughs> I learned we have a yeah, we have a lot of conversations around it. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a craft. All right. And it's for enjoyment. I hope you guys are enjoying taking this little break with us today to do some making. All right. So I have my little planter and it says, be happy. There we go. And I am still going to add my initials out to the side. I'm going to color the background with a colored pencil, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the back, where I color the back with a colored pencil and decorate the back. So you guys, feel free to keep coloring on your end. We are going to keep coloring over here. I'm going to do my initials in a little different spot than last time. I wonder if anyone's using a photograph. That was something I thought about, but I wasn't sure if the paper would be too thick. So I went ahead and opted out of the photograph idea, but I know that that's very popular for keychains. Maybe some of the people with animals are considering that, or maybe they're drawing a portrait. I also wonder how many pom-poms we're gonna see out there in a few minutes, you guys. All right. We have a few people who said that they are using photographs. Oh, good. And we have a few people who are using shrinkadinks. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. I think that there's like kind of an endless amount of things that you can use to make a keychain or a backpack charm. 
Um, and that's really kind of the fun about it, right guys? Yeah. I mean, there's kind of just no wrong way here. I also think that one of my favorite parts is making the tassel too. So that is coming up next. And that one, guys, I will go over a couple times if you are not familiar with tassels. Um, things to think about for that supply. We'll use yarn today, but you can um, make one with string. Just know it's going to take a lot more string. You could make one with some pipe cleaners. It will just not be as flowy. Um, you could use pom-poms to add some uh, decoration to your keychain if you don't have yarn. Uh, different kinds of cording can be substituted for yarn, or if you already have another kind of keychain that you just want to add to the one that you're making today, that's always another option is to take kind of a, a found object or something you already own that you're not putting to its best life and uh, reuse it. One second, Belle. What's going on, girlfriend? I'm finished. You're finished coloring. Well, can you wait just one minute for me? And I traced my heart with dots and I made a little eye. Man, you color so fast. Look at that. Okay, so I just colored my background. It's peach. It might be kind of hard to see on the camera. Here, Bellamy wants to show hers. So this is my daughter's. She drew a friend and then made rainbow stripe and polka dot on the back. So we will help her assemble in one second. I'm going to go ahead and color the back of mine. Hopefully you guys are moving right along with me. So I did peach for the background on the front side, and then I'm gonna do green on the back since I kind of have my plant theme going on here. And then I'm coloring just really lightly, as you can see on camera. And then what I'm going to do is take my marker and kind of make some little drawings on the back to make the design. And that way, when you see the keychain, it's two-sided instead of just being one-sided. The other option that you could do is get some um, kind of like thinner colored paper and make a solid backer or use that for a backer and then color on the colored paper to make a design. Um, lots of options, you know, we kind of discussed in the beginning, you could use printed paper, wrapping paper, all those different things. Um, that would work if you want to do a layered design. You just want to make sure that it fits in the keychain. Um, and then it can close, okay? And then the tape will also help with that here in a minute, just in case you need it. Yep, yep. So I like polka dots. I'm going down the polka dot train one more time here. I don't know about you guys, but I like kind of the action of making dots, but then I also like how they look. So they've always been a favorite of mine. All right, so one more time, I will show you kind of what mine looks like and my daughter's. So here is my circle keychain. That's the front, a little plant, snake plant says be happy, has my initials. And then the back is polka dotted and then hers has a portrait of a friend who's outside enjoying the sun. And then on the back, rainbow and polka dots. And so what no, we're going to do, Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. The back of the face? Mm -hmm. it's oh, I'm face. so sorry. It's a heart face. It's a heart face. There we go. I do love that design though. So what we're going to do next, um, we're going to go ahead and assemble this part of the keychain and then we'll move on to making our tassel. Lindsay, how's everyone doing out there? Are they, everyone moving along nicely? Seems like it at the moment. Hey, so if you're ready to assemble your keychain, you probably already figured it out quickly, but you just put your paper in and secure the shape on top. Um, it took me earlier just a little wiggling around to figure out how to make it um, go together nicely, but it should only take you a couple tries of just kind of flip it around, get the feel. There we go. And then what I like to do is take just a little bit of that super duper clear tape, like the kind that like once you rub it on, you can't see it at all. Well, you can see through it. You can see you through it. You don't even know it's there. That's the whole idea. You don't even know it's there. And I just put a little bit on each side 
Um, I kind of know which one is my back. So I have a little more overlap on the back than the front. But that's just to make sure that this cover stays on nicely. Um, I have not tried glue. So just heads up, it may work for you. I have not tried it. I much prefer the clear tape method because then too, if you want to take it apart and update your art or change out your picture or give it as a gift and personalize it further, you have that option. Um, and I find that the tape really doesn't show up or get in the way. So that's one. Yay. Yay. And then here's the other. I have a question. What's your question, dear? Do you have to do the tassel? No, you don't have to do the tassel. You may personalize the craft any way that makes sense for you and your end use. All right, so just putting mine in, again, same method, slide it on in there, find the perfect fit for the circle that goes on top. It always takes me a couple tries of working it either which way to figure out how it fits in there the nicest. And the nicest meaning just getting it as flush as possible all the way around. And once I think I'm there, I just check it, check it, check it, and then add my little bit of tape. In fact, this one's a little big, so I'm gonna make it smaller. <clears throat> you really only need the tiniest amount of tape um, to go on there. I could have even cut that in half and it would have still worked perfectly. Okay. So once your tape is on there, you could be done or you could make a tassel. So we're gonna make a tassel. Okay. So the instructions for the tassel, you're going to take this yarn and wrap it around your hand like 20 times. So I just wanna give everyone the heads up. <laughs> That's where we're starting. We are starting with a wrap of 20 times. So Bellamy, can you help me count to 20? Yes. One, One two, three, Four, five. Whoa, six, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right, so once you get to 20 times, you're just going to snip it off. So I'll tell you a couple things about making tassels. Either you want it thicker or thinner. Um, this is a 20 wrap tassel. If you want to go thinner, obviously go less. I would start at like 15, see if you like the feel. Um, if not, you can undo a couple rounds. Or if you want it thicker, obviously you can go more. I wouldn't go too thick. This one's pretty chunky for um, the keychain size, but obviously please personalize to your liking, your style, your craft, right? So once you make your loops, and I will do this again one more time for everyone out there, so don't worry if you're a step behind, then, um, We'll catch you right back up here in a second. So then you're gonna make two strips. You want each one to be about six, eight inches. You're gonna use those in just a second. First one you're gonna take and tie through your tassel. So what you'll do is you'll just find a spot with the loops, pull it through and you're gonna tie a knot. And don't stress about your tassel. If it's your first time making one and you feel like you mess it up, we can undo it all and start over. Just saying, that's the nice thing about tassels. Okay, so then you should have tied it through on one side of the loops, just pick a spot, and then you should still have a circle. So what I like to do next before I cut anything is if you wanna do this kind of wrap, you're gonna go ahead and do that right now. So pick your spot a little bit down from the top and I like to do just kind of a loose um, knot, not a double knot to hold it in place and secure the position of that over wrap. So this is really just eyeballing where you want this wrap to go. And I'm gonna hold this up a little bit closer. So you're just deciding right now where you want this to go, how far down from the top that you want that little wrap to be. Once you've kind of found your spot, like I said, I wrap it over once and just a really um, kind of loose knot and secure it and from there, I do the wrapping and then you're just taking these and wrapping them to make that rope at the top of your tassel. And then when you're done, you'll just want to tuck them in under. If you want it to be super secure, you know you're going to put this on your backpack and it's going to need some help. 
um, being durable, then you will absolutely want to secure it with just a spot of tape, you guys. Okay. Um, you can tie it off and then trim it and secure it, or you can tuck it under and glue it. I'm going to tie it off. Okay. And this is a tiny little knot over here. Sorry, guys. I know it can be hard to see when we start doing the tiny things, but I think you all probably get the gist on how to make your wrap and how to tie your knot. So I'm going to trust that you're with me. And then, like I said, I am going to do um, one more tassel here in just a second. So once you have that all secured, wrapped, everything's in there, you're happy with how it looks, then your next step is to trim off the bottom and even up your size. All right, so whenever you trim off your bottom, I just take as much as I can at once, cut it open, make sure all the loops are done. Then I take a look at my tassel and I cut it to size. So what I'm gonna do next is just cut the ends to where they are more even. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a haircut. Yeah. It's apparently funny. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? Tassels need haircuts too. Okay, friends. So, Lindsay, do you think we have some people who could benefit from one more tassel making turn? Yes, we, we have quite a few people asking to see it again. Okay, perfect. So, this is tassel one. If you're not there yet, don't worry. We're about to start on tassel number two. And you only need to make one for the craft. I'm just doing two to help you walk through the steps. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first thing you're going to do, I'm going to move my little cuttings aside, my haircut. Haircut. All right, and then Bellamy is going to help me count out to 20. So think about your um, yarn as you're getting started. So we're, okay, I can count myself at request of the daughter. All right. Okay, she's working on her own tassel. So you're going to just pull out a bunch of yarn and you're going to wrap it around your hands 20 times. That's going to make for the right thickness. If you want it thinner, you can do a little less. I wouldn't go too far below 15 or you're going to have a really skinny tassel. So you just put it in your hand, hold it still, and you're going to wrap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And then when you're done, make a snip. So what I do, what what I do is keep it like a circle, you wanna keep it in the loop. And then I'm going to cut two pieces that are about six to eight inches long and I'll show you what we're gonna do with those in one second. That was like way too long, but we'll make it work. Cut this one a little shorter. Okay, so <clears throat> your first one is going to be this attachment. So it's gonna be either what you bead on or if you don't want to do beads, no problem. It's just going to be what attaches to your keychain. So let's see. I think for my colors, I should do the blue and green to attach to my keychain. In fact, I might do blue and green on the other rope as well. So first one, like I said, is what you're going to attach to your keychain. So you're just going to pull the piece all the way through the whole loop. So this is what it would look like. You have just a big circle of yarn with a couple ends hanging out there. And you are going to pull it through, try to get as even as you can, and then tie a knot. I always tie two knots, especially with yarn, it's real kind of slippy. And then as I said, this is gonna be this little strand right here that attaches to your keychain, so you want it to be tied well. I'll help you in just a minute. Okay, so there you go. So at this point, this is kind of what you have. You have a loop with your um, string held to it at the top. So now what we're gonna do next is make this band that goes across the top of your tassel. So hopefully everyone's with me. If not, don't forget, you can always go back and rewatch our videos. 
because they're free tomorrow and they're on YouTube. Yep, they'll be on our website tomorrow. Um, and you can go back and catch up anytime if you need a refresher on how to make tassel um, or if you want to make a keychain because you didn't have what you needed in front of you today. Okay, so now we're going to make the wrap on the tassel. So first thing you'll do is decide how far down you want to go. And then I like to do a light knot just to hold it in place while I do my wrapping. So I kind of get my knot started. And then once before I pull it too tight, that's when I really work on the positioning. So using this ombre yarn, I went and made sure that this was blue and green and that this is blue and green to kind of match the color scheme of my keychain. And then I found the position that I like, just a little bit down from the top. And now I'm going to go ahead and start my wrapping. So again, no perfect way to do this, just as much um, braiding as you want to kind of show here is what you'll wrap for. And then when you're done, you can tie a knot and trim it. You can just twist it under um, its own lacing you can secure it with a piece of glue. So lots of different options on how to tie it off, but what I prefer to do is um, tie a little knot and then just tuck it under. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so a little bitty knot gets tied and then I trim it off and tuck it under. So then for those of you who caught our haircut last time, the last thing that we're gonna do is trim the bottom of our tassel. Make sure it looks like this at the bottom. So what you want to do is just try to find all the loops and the first thing you're going to do is kind of just snip them free. Then what I like to do is go back and um, get everything to be the right size. So I just make sure all the extra loops are snipped. You can see me catching a couple there. And then I have some extra length here. If you don't have extra length, you'll just want to cut off the long ones. If you have extra length, then you can afford to give the whole thing a haircut. I have a little extra length, so I am going to really look at my shortest piece of thread or yarn um, and cut to that as best I can. And I always have a straggler. <laughs> so there we go. So there is the tassel. Okay, friends, so what I'm going to do next for this craft is add some beads and then attach it to my keychain. Okay, so if you wanna add beads, now's the time before you tie it to your keychain. So I had pulled um, some beads together before we started. So that is where I am beginning. Um, so this is kind of where you can do whatever kind of um, decoration you like. You can add beads, not add beads. Um, you can do a few, uh, just one or two. You could do longer strand of beads so that this hangs longer. It's totally your style, your call, um, your design. So I'm gonna put on three, just like my example. A lot of times when I do these classes, I try to stay close to my example to make it easier for you guys at home to follow. So that's what I'm doing today. I did update my art though. We went from palm tree to a plant. Still in the greenery theme. Hey, Lindsay, I feel like I should check in with you. I feel like I've just been chatting away over here making my craft. Yes, you yeah. <laughs> have. There are some people who are a little bit behind, but again, they can watch this video and see it a little bit slower if they need to. Okay. Um, and then the other question is if they don't have beads, do they need beads and how to attach it to their keychain? Great questions. So no, you don't need beads. Um, you can absolutely just do whatever you would like. I'm giving my tassel another haircut while I talk you guys. Um, you can finish it off at the tassel and just attach that. I just did beads as an extra layer of decoration. It is totally your call um, on how much or how little embellishment you want to do. And then when you are done, great question on how to attach it, you are just going to tie it on to the silver spot. So before I do that, I don't want my beads to slip. So I'm going to make um, a little knot for my beads to not slip. And then I'm going to tie my tassel onto my keychain. 
And then I have a really fun keychain. How are you doing, Bellamy? Good. Good. Found my way. Found her way. Okay, good. I found it. So you haven't helped me. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to let this one hang a little longer than the last one. So I am just going to go ahead and tie a knot, move it to the end, and trim the ends of my yarn. I went through the larger silver loop. Um, if you have this keychain set in front of you, you'll notice. Here's one that's not open yet. You'll notice that closer to the shape, there's um, a larger silver loop. That's where I am attaching to. I know it can be hard to see on screen, but you have little silver chain and a larger hoop. So I'm attaching to the larger hoop. And then of course, like we've said, definitely feel free to um, freestyle this craft in any way that you like. This is your keychain. Either you're going to use this yourself, give it to a friend, give it to your teacher for a back to school gift, um, or use it yourself. So super fun little pick me up kind of craft today. And I would love to hear about all the ones that people are doing without using their uh, standard creatology kit. I love when we use extra layers of creativity. And then for those of you using the creatology kit, what shape did you use? Um, lots of options. So there you go. There is my second keychain of the day here. This was the first one. I tied the tassel a little closer on my first one, a little looser on this one, um, but still a fun little backpack charm keychain bag charm with my plant, my initials, and then the polka dot backing. And then uh, Bellamy is finishing up hers, so we'll show you that one here next. Lindsay, do you think I need to do another tassel or are we okay? I think some people would like to see you do another tassel if there's time. You know what? I'll make it happen, friends. Okay, everyone, 30 second countdown to the third tassel of the day. So go ahead and get your yarn out. I'm gonna help Bellamy finish up hers real quick and then I will show you all how Okay. I will show you all how we're going to do this. She is just putting some beads on here, Bellamy. Let me move it over to the camera. I'm just putting some beads on to help my daughter real quick with hers, and then we will make another tassel with you all. And I'm uh, gonna make two. I'm gonna put two tassels on mine. Okay, hold on. I'll be back. All right. Sometimes beading with yarn can be a little frustrating because it tends to fray. So you have to kind of pull out all your patience. So I'm just going to help her add some beads and then I am right back with you guys for tassel number three. Okay, here you go, Belle. All right, friends. So that was your countdown. So we're going to take a large, long piece of yarn and put your hand out. We're going to wrap it around this hand 20 times. So what that does is create the amount of thickness of your tassel. So like I said, if you didn't hear me earlier, if you want to go thinner, uh, maybe like 15 times, I wouldn't go too terribly thin or you're going to have a really skinny tassel. So I'm going to do 20. So I'm going to count 20 again. I'm sure everyone's counting with me if you're just now making your tassel. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then just snip it off. Okay, so then what you want to do is get two pieces of string, six, eight inches long, a little longer is okay. I would say short, you're not probably going to be very happy. So I would go longer than shorter, friends, and then take your first piece, doesn't matter which one. For myself earlier, I was worried about color um, combinations, so it's one way to think about it. Your first piece is going to be what attaches to your keychain, so another way to think about it. And just put that through what was your circle of yarn, okay? Then you're going to tie that off a couple times because you want a nice secure knot. This is the top of your tassel that's going to attach to your keychain. So I like to do two knots because I feel like yarn tends to slip just a tad. Okay, so now this is kind of what you have. You have a loop that you've tied a knot to the top. So then what you do next is decide how far down you want this decorative wrap. So that's what your next string that you cut is for. 
And what I like to do is kind of tie a loose knot and then position it and tighten it. And then you're gonna start your wrapping. So loose knot, kind of get it in position, which just really means how close to the top of your tassel you want this um, wrap to be. Again, it's a decorative wrap, but it kind of gives a finished tassel look. Um, kind of get everything nice and tight. And then I pull it tight and you're just gonna start wrapping it around, nothing tricky. Get it into the look that you like. And then you have a couple options. You can tie a knot and trim it. You can just twist it and secure it underneath the other bands. Um, you can grab some glue to secure it, whatever you like. I am going to tie a knot and trim it. I don't feel like it shows up very much, so I'm totally fine doing that. But if that look bothers you, you have other options, okay, friends? So I tied my knot, there's my tassel. I'm going to trim these little guys off. And then my next step is going to be to cut the loops to make the ends of my tassel. All right, so I got that done. So now it's just about finishing out the tassel. So the first thing that I like to do is go through and just get rid of my loops. That way I can see what I'm doing. Looks like all my loops are gone. And so then if you do not have a ton of extra string or you got a little short somehow, take one of your shorter strands, maybe I would take like that red one and even it up. You can also leave it mixed links, totally your call. Um, I am gonna go a little shorter. I think I saw a really short guy back here, this orange one. I have some extra length, so I'm gonna try to even out to this orange friend here and give my tassel what I call a haircut. And that's just cutting it off at the ends to get your tassel to be more like all one length. It always happens every time I do it. <laughs> I always have a straggler no matter how I do my tassels. Um, I've even made plenty of pom-poms and I like always have a straggler. Okay, so there's your cutie pie tassel. And so when you're done with that, oh my goodness. Um, you know what I'll do? I will take my first one from today and show you what I'm gonna do next. So if I'm adding beads, this is where I would add beads. My daughter just informed me that she used all of them. So um, if you wanted to add beads, you could go here. Another idea, if you don't wanna add beads, but like you wanna do something is I like doing just some loose knots. It kind of adds a little decorative element. So that's what I'm gonna do. Cause this fun, um, you know, kind of ombre rainbow colored yarn will look kind of cool with the, um, the knots. And if you have solid yarn, no problem. It just adds some texture, as you can see. <clears throat> it just adds some texture here at the top. So I'm just making like three or four knots and then I can tie it to my keychain. So when I'm tying it to my keychain, I'm gonna grab an empty one real quick to show you. Um, so this is an empty one but it has uh, the big keychain, the little chain and the silver loop. I'm attaching to the silver loop. So I know earlier someone had asked how to attach. What I'm doing is just double knotting it on here and trimming it up real good. So I'm gonna knot it on this one and this is gonna be like the super tassel keychain of the day. Trying to get it as even as I can. Let's see, how did I do that earlier? Gonna knot it on here and then pull it through and trim it. And then we will have a little show and tell session over here. And if you are already done, please tell us in the chat what you made. If you had our kit, what shape you chose, what you drew, um, if you use any kind of special supply that you didn't hear us list, or if you didn't have our kit, tell us how you made your keychain. Or if you don't want to share it, don't have to. That's right. You don't have to share. Sharing's just if you feel like it. Okay, so that was my second tassel. So, so here you go. Tassel keychain number one. This one is super tassel-tastic. Tassel keychain number two, like a longer chain and beads. And then I actually think Bellamy's is the most tassel-tastic ever. 
because she did multiple and tassels to tie it on to anything you need. Cool, multiple tassels and beads, and a picture of her friend. The most yarn tassel tastic version in the house. Okay, so Lindsay, what do we got out there? Some people said that they are going to rewatch the video and do it tomorrow, and that link will be in the chat. And some people said that they use scrapbook paper in the keychain to have a pattern in there since they didn't want to draw. Yeah, it's still a great idea. Yes. And we have people who did pineapples, hearts, stars, lots of creative people out here. Fun. You know what I was thinking about? I know you said people did animals. You could always get some super strong glue and put some wiggle eyes on the outside. They won't go inside this keychain because it's super thin, but you could always embellish the outside too. So just a thought for those people making animals. If they want to add some wiggle eyes. We're here for it. All right, friends. Well, here's my keychain. You want to show them yours one more time? Hold it up. I added like we keep I, adding to it over here. I tied my knot to make sure the the loop doesn't come off. All right. And make sure that if you decide to photograph and you want to share your craft, you will just post it on social media. Can I tell them who I made on my um, with hashtag make it with Michaels. We would love to see today's creations. And then don't forget, this is the last week of summer camp, not the last week of Kids Club. Uh, we'll be back with more content as we get through the back half of the year. But our every single day Kids Camp goes through this week. There's a bunch of fun programming still out there. So if you have some free time this week, it's every day at three o'clock central. We'd love to see you sign up and make some fun crafts with us. Anything else, Miss Lindsay? I don't think so. Bunch of okay. people had a great time. Awesome. Well, friends, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Can you say bye? Bye. Bye.